you both acknowledge uh, the lack of affordable housing as a major problem. Now, 13 states have or allow some form of rent control. Are you willing to consider rent control as a method for making housing more affordable? And also, what other ideas for making rent control affordable? Rent control, yes and no. I, you know, that's a very complicated subject. I want to learn more about it, but part of me right now would say yes, a strong part I would lean towards that. It would be hard to convince me otherwise, because right now, at the end of the day, everything we've talked about, I've talked about, is building affordable rental units. I don't even know what the word affordable means anymore in the context of people's living arrangements. So, uh, as you know, because we've met before, I've done a lot of work on homelessness, but to the point of what you're asking about, um, we have to create places for people to live that they can actually afford afford to live in. You know, we, we leave the country, you're all familiar with the Alice Report, people living paycheck to paycheck. We've seen in this pandemic how many businesses have not been able to sustain, how many have closed because they barely can go month to month, they didn't have the reserve. Where are people going to live? So, you know, there's, there's a, a whole lot to be said about, you know, our homeless situation, but we have really a big population of at-risk homeless. And part of that is the, the circumstances of the pandemic, but the other part of it is providing affordable rental units. So uh, that the other day we talked about the minimum wage. I've been a strong proponent of the minimum wage prior. I usually have it on my website, but then in this pandemic, I don't know how feasible that is. And so the offset and where I've turned to is thinking more and more because between employers and employee, that's gonna have to be separate. How can we give people a place to live? We're gonna to have to build places, which I believe we can do in the urban core. I've talked to developers. There's some great plans and ideas. And even going back to DPP and what we need to do to make that more efficient to create affordable living. So if we can do that, then we'll see as to what level of income we're talking about as far as rent control. But I think there's a lot more we can do to put roofs over people's heads in places where they can actually afford to pay for it. So the big deal with me, big deal, Doug. Thank you, Rick. Keith Amamiya, your response in two minutes, please. All right, thanks for the question, Doug. And, and real quickly, food not bombs. I've, I've helped serve meals by uh, Thomas Square with, uh, I believe, Puna Tateishi. So uh, that's a great program and good job on that. In terms of rent control, you know, I, I don't know if I support or oppose it at this point, but I think you and I have the same goal, and that's to lower the cost of housing here on Oahu. Uh, that's the bottom line, whether it's through rent control or other means, uh, we need to do whatever we can to lower the skyrocketing out of control housing prices here on Oahu. I'm the first and only candidate to have a comprehensive housing for all plan that seeks to uh, dramatically decrease and address the 22,000 unit shortage we have here on Oahu. There's three main areas of my housing for all plan. Number one, focus on housing for Oahu residents and not out of state residents. Number two, curb the activities that inflate the cost of housing like the 8,000 illegal vacation rentals that are still here on Oahu. And number three is to encourage private development of housing, particularly in the urban core whether that's through zoning variances, higher building uh, 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 levels, whether it's providing infrastructure like sewer, utility, and water to incentivize developers to build in the urban core, I'm all for that. In terms of the housing that I think you're looking for, Doug, yes, the city needs to and will do more if I'm the next mayor. We need to build more affordable rentals. Uh, my campaign headquarters is in Kaka'ako and half a block away is the Nale Hulu Senior Rental Project. It's a low income senior rental project. It's a very successful project that the city's done uh, and I'm gonna do more of that as mayor. I also talk about Kahoiki Village when I have my another minute in a, a minute. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you Keith. All right, Rick Blanchiardi, is there anything that you'd like to rebut or enhance? If, oh. if I think it's just about enhancing. I think we could talk about this subject. It's so important. So I really kind of want to, I want to just say, I, and I said this before when I spoke to you, it's one of the things that I really believe in. There's an old adage that says that a society is judged by how it treats its most vulnerable. So in this particular case, as I already alluded to the fact this morning that the Kapuna are the fastest growing segment of our population in 65 plus, that is a big at-risk community given, given the lack of 
affordability in rental units or for that matter, anything that's increasing the cost of living. I know in my building, they recently changed. I live in a condominium right next to Thomas Square and they changed the lease laws and a bunch of people who are on fixed incomes had to move out. So Doug, that's part of my interest in seeing that what happens when you're in a fixed income, then all of a sudden the, the numbers change and you can't handle that. That's why I have a tendency to say, you have to talk me out of looking at that. So this is a complicated subject, it's a big one. And if we're gonna be successful as mayors, this would be a great thing to do for the people who live here. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. Keith Amamiya, here's your extra minute to respond. So as I was gonna say, we, we need to be creative and we can't just focus on traditional housing as they say. And, and my emphasis will be on the lower spectrum of housing that hasn't really been given the attention it needs. I mentioned Kahawiki Village. That's a perfect example of a public-private partnership involving the state, the city, the nonprofit sector, and the private sector. It's a community that houses 144 previously homeless families, 600 people in all, including 300 children. I mentioned the Lower Income Senior Rentals Project, but I also want to look at uh, other types of housing that simply are not as expensive as traditional housing whether that's communal housing where everyone has their own room. It's a dorm style type of housing where you have a central kitchen and a central living room area to keep the cost down. I'm also in favor of building condominiums or apartments with micro units, very tiny units. A lot of people don't need a lot of space and in fact prefer less space. So I'm in favor of looking at every and all options to address our homelessness and housing issue. Thank you.